Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. We are going to take another example in this group that is Chlorophyta and the example is of Eulothrix. Eulothrix is a filamentous green alga and it is considered as a multicellular organism. The reason why we call it multicellular is because there are different cells which are performing different functions. Say for example, as it is filamentous, the lowermost cell which is called the hold fast and this is the cell which is attached to a substratum. It could be a rock or a structure like that and other cells are one over the other and this is how the entire filament is formed. Now each cell if you observe carefully is more in width and less in height except for the top cell. The topmost one is little semicircular. So there are three types. One is little elongated and this is known as the hold fast. Its job is to hold the filament to the substratum and it is normally non-green. That means here chloroplast, chlorophyll is absent. And the uppermost cell is semicircular. Now if you look into each cell and say we enlarge one cell, we would find all general characters are common which we are not drawing. That means it would have those cellulosic cell wall and everything is same. Chloroplast per cell there is only one chloroplast and that chloroplast is C shaped or what we call the girdle shape. So the chloroplast is something like this. I have drawn it like this so that this part is visible. And in this depression in the center of part, there is the nucleus place. So nucleus would be somewhere here inside, which is not visible to us. And on this chloroplast, we find few pyrenoids. Pyrenoids means again, that reserve food in which there is a protein core and which is surrounded by the starch grains. So there are these pyrenoids. This is... These are pyrenoids and this green structure is the chloroplast. So there is a single girdle shaped chloroplast which is present and each chloroplast has one to five and that's why we normally say that there are few pyrenoids which are embedded. In case of eulothrix, both asexual and sexual reproductions are seen. Asexual reproduction is by zoospore formation. And sexual reproduction is by gamete formation and zygotic meiosis. So now if we have to talk about asexual reproduction, then say this cell. This cell is going to act as a zoosporangium. Zoosporangium. That means in this cell, the zoospores will be produced. So let us enlarge this cell. And now... In the cell, the protoplast, that is the cytoplasmic material, is going to undergo mitotic divisions. So there are mitotic divisions which would take place. As a result of which, we would find many structures which appear. And the number of these structures would depend on how many divisions have taken place? Normally the number of mitotic divisions, they are variable. 2, 4, 6, even 8 divisions are there. And that's why there are multiple compartments or multiple cell-like structures which are formed. And now this is going to rupture. When this cell ruptures, there are zoospores which are released. And if you observe it carefully, these zoospores are quadriflagellate. They are quadri 
flagellate. That means they have four flagella. And now these zoospores again grow to form the filament. They would attach to a substratum through their anterior end, will lose their flagella and each zoospore will give rise to a complete filament that is the urothex. So this is asexual mode of reproduction. This is asexual reproduction. Now if we have to understand how this sexual reproduction is going to take place then some cell is going to act as a gametangium. That means in this gametes would be formed. This cell was acting as zoosporangium and some cell is acting as gametangium. So say this is the cell which is acting as gametangium. Now what happens here is gametes are formed. The method is exactly same as that of zoospore formation. So protoplast divides and finally this gametangium will rupture releasing the gametes. The gametes are smaller and they are biflagellate. So these are the gametes and they have only two flagella. Two gametes are going to fuse. They fuse through their anterior end. So this is one gamete. The other gamete is this one and the two flagella. The two gametes are exactly identical. So this is isogamous type of fusion and a zygote is formed. Temporarily the zygote is quadriflagellate. And then it loses its flagella or rather its flagella and undergoes meiotic division. And because it is the zygote which is dividing by meiosis, we call it zygotic meiosis. So it loses its flagella, becomes circular and now inside this there are haploid structures formed which are called the meospores. Once this structure ruptures, these meospores are released and each meospore would give rise to the complete filament of eulothrix. So there is, this is the sexual reproduction which takes place by gamete formation and asexual reproduction is by zoospore formation. The method is pretty much same. Only thing that we have to remember here is that in case of eulothrix, zoospores are quadriflagellate which is very very important. Whether the zoospore formation or gamete formation, it is the cytoplasmic content which divides and then whether it has four flagella or two would tell us whether it is a zoospore or a gamete. The zygote temporarily has four flagella which are lost and then there would be meiosis which takes place. Zygotic meiosis is also the important part. Most of the stages are haploid except for the zygote. That means the life cycle is haplontic type. So in Chlamydomonas also we saw that the life cycle was haplontic and in Eulothrix also the life cycle is haplontic. So this is another example of chlorophyta. Next example is of spirogyra which we will take up in the next video.